honestly, like 98% of people who are gonna try and be professional poker players won't make it as a professional poker player. Yo guys, so I have a pretty good habit that I think you guys are like. I tend to read as many YouTube comments as I can, including the hateful ones, including the positive ones, including the inquisitive ones. I don't get around to replying to too many of them, but I do think that it's worth my time, especially in the beginning of my YouTube career, to look what everyone's saying. I know that a lot of people will make a comment just out of frustration or just out of just like pure boredom and they weren't expecting they wouldn't be expecting me to read it but I, I, I do think it's good it's uh, it's a good amount of feedback you have to take things with a pinch of salt I like to be able to adjust what I do and I make sure that I, I take in what everyone says and eventually hopefully I'll get a lot better at the way I communicate and the things that I do and this is all aimed towards me being able to be more articulate and better at communicating for my charity and also to be able to make better content for my training site that's coming up. I just read a comment, someone called Echo Ellis, shout out to you. And the comment says, can someone tell me why I've read time and time again at the micros too? Colon. Very rarely bluff, don't slow play, don't get tricky. If they raise, they have it most of the time. Yet Charlie does the exact opposite of this and crushes it. And it made me think, I think that Especially in the highlight reels, people watching YouTube are probably gonna get a very skewed image of how I play and therefore how they should be playing. And also, they don't hear me when I'm speaking on Twitch about how the difference between how you guys should be playing and how I should be playing is. I'll, I'll, I'll break that down just, just in, the, in those two parts quickly. So, I haven't, I haven't planned this out, so I'm just gonna see what comes out. The way that you're gonna see me playing on the YouTube highlights is you're gonna be seeing the most action-packed hands. And I think this is what a lot of people, when they're watching the highlights, they don't kind of realize. They're like, oh my God, he's playing every hand, he just doesn't fold. It's like, no, you just don't wanna see the hands that I, I opened and then check folded the flop. I'm not gonna put that in the highlight reel, or my editor isn't at least. Say hi to Hannah. What's up <laughs> to Hannah? Shout out to Hannah. He's uh, helping me pack at home. We're about to move to a different Airbnb. You really have to be taken, not just with a pinch of salt, you have to be taking my plays with just like a bucket load of salt because I'm not playing the way that you think I'm playing if you're only paying attention to the highlights. I'm generally on the micro stakes. I am playing pretty ABC. But the thing is, and here's the second part of this, I've played millions and millions and millions of poker hands and I have a very good intuition because of that and because I think of my natural ability to play poker to be able to recognize situations of where people are going to be fighting back with nothing. There's so many straights, so good many call. flushes out yes. there. She said good call. <laughs> no way! And where people are definitely going to have it. Charlie folds! Good fold, bro. Good fold. And where people are, are just like full of shit and they obviously aren't wrapping anything and all of all of the things in between. Like it might be like people gen tend to like 60 to 70% have it here or 60 to 70% not have it here. And that's an intuition that I don't expect 99.99% of people watching my videos to be able to have. Unless there are a few sickos just like floating around. And so what I tell my students is that don't copy how I play. And if I, if I were to play for them and show them how I would play, I would play a much more safe, solid ABC style. ABC. You don't want to be bluffing as much at the beginning of your career. And the way that you can think about it is, imagine if you're building like a, a huge castle of Lego. <laughs> I haven't thought through this analogy, so it might be terrible. Bear with me. You don't want to just start filling in the tops of the castle, you know, it's just not going to have a sustainable foundational base. You want to start right at the bottom layer. And in poker, that bottom layer is having good opening ranges first. And then being able, learning how to see that, learning bet sizes, learning ranges, learning perceived ranges, and just layering up and up and up like that. And once you get to, I'd say that point, learning ranges and perceived ranges, that's where you can start kind of branching out, putting in some more tricky plays, leading some turns, check raising some flops with nothing, raising some, some raises, so like three betting the flop with air, where you think that people are just gonna be way over bluffing. Because once you've got to that point, then you at least have the point 
one above where most people on the absolute micro stakes are on like two and a half, five and a half. So most people on the micro stakes, they, they have the first thing they have. This is my hand and I kind of think that the opponent has this. So once you know what your perceived range is, you can start exploiting that kind of thought process. But you really want to make sure that before you do that, you can actually crush just using a simplistic, I wanna have a better hand on average than my opponent. I'm gonna be betting big for value. I'm gonna be making some nitty folds with top pair because people tend to always have it. And then once you've done that, you can start getting more of an intuition for, oh, okay, for this guy, I, I see bet small on the flop and now he's raised and he's not really repping much on the turn. He could have all of these different bluffs. So now I'm gonna start calling down with this top pair instead of before when I was folding it and maybe call down with the second pair, etc. What I'm What I'm getting at, if, if you guys still, or if anyone out there needs me to spell it out just a tiny bit more is don't copy how you see other people playing. I mean, definitely don't copy the GTO bots, really, please. Hashtag fuck you, GTO, do not forget that. But more than that, don't just copy how I play. Maybe take a little nugget and be like, oh, okay, so he raises a lot of these kind of flops in position. Or, you know, he, he check raises these kind of flops when the person's gonna be C-betting 100%. But don't look for the crazy plays that I make and expect them to work for yourself. And I hope that people don't see this as an arrogant tone, but I am a lot better than the people that I'm teaching at poker and that's super okay. I don't mean this as like a, oh, I'm better than you guys kind of thing. It's just like, you know, I'm better at poker. Someone else will be better at, I don't know, working out. And someone else will be better at IT and everyone has their own things. And it's good to be able to be honest with yourself about where you fit in the pecking order. And it's something that I don't think people tend to do enough. People don't understand how much of a difference there is between them and the person above them and them and the people right at the top. So for instance, when a lot of my students at the moment, they're kind of like iterating and flitting, fli flicking between um, flitting between 25 and 50 and L, they for some reason have it in their head that 50 and L players are just crushes and they're like, oh no, how can I do this? Do I, can I really still play like this on 50 and L? Will it be too exploitable? When in actuality, the difference between 25, 50 and L is pretty nothing. Like once you, once you get up to the high stakes, you look at them as basically the exact same with maybe minor adjustments and how aggressive they are post op and things like that. Um, so people, when they're zoomed in on a situation, they tend to really just see all the little micro variances and nuances is kind of blown out of proportion. And in the other, on the other side of the spectrum, you can say people who are right at the bottom, they look at people right at the top and they're like, well, they're playing the same fucking game as me. They're playing poker. I play poker. They can't be that much better. And it's really hard to understand how much of a skill gap there is between the people who are playing like the 100Ks, like I was, and the people who are playing like the, the $5 tournaments, which, you know, a lot of people watching YouTube are. And there's nothing wrong with that. I'm not shitting on people that play $5. Like I played the micro stakes for a very long time and it's definitely, it's a necessary, it's a necessary part of learning and developing and you know, everyone, everyone went through it. But I, I guess that I see a, a particular lack of humility in the, the YouTube comments and uh, sometimes in Twitch, but more in YouTube, people just being like, oh, this guy doesn't know how to play. If only he played like me, if only I got a buy-in. In fact, I'm, I might I might get my uh, editor to just like throw in a, a few screenshots of these comments just to give you guys a, a, a bit of a giggle. And th this isn't me getting sour. Like, I don't, I don't care if people call me shit at poker. Like, do what you may. Uh, I'm retired, so it doesn't matter if I'm shit anymore. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I was still, still coach. I, I, I got to keep up to date. I have to scratch my, my ability. But it's something that's really important to recognize. And not everyone's that extreme of, you know, lacking humility. It's like, you know, people could be a 5 and out player and think that they can beat 50 and out if only they had the buy-ins. And honestly, you probably can't. If you're, if you're sitting there playing 5 and out and you think that, you know, you just need a, a bankroll and you need to get up to the stakes where they respect your raises, shout out to the micros, uh, the YouTube series, the micros, then you're probably slightly deluded. There's 99, probably 98% of the time, you're gonna be deluded in that, in that spot. I guess the point I'm making in with, by saying that is you have to be extremely honest with yourself because when you have an accurate interpretation of reality, all of the decisions that you're making are going to be according to that reality. Whereas say you have reality here and you have a slightly off image of reality, all the decisions you're gonna be making are gonna be firing towards this one, bouncing off at different angles, depending on you know the repercussions of that. And that's not going to be 
matched on to what you want because reality is who you are and you want to be making good decisions based on who you are, not who you think you are or not who you want to be or who you wish you were. I would say take a lot of time to really think through how good, I'm, how good am I at poker based on my results? Because everyone's gonna be biased. Most people think they're better than they are. A few people think they're worse. Just take a, a lot of time to think, okay, if I, am, if I think I'm this good, I'm gonna prove it to myself. I, I think I can beat 15 L, so let's make sure I can beat five L first, then 10 L, then 25 L. And don't just jump around being like, oh, okay, I want a 2K tournament now, let's play 15 L. It's a very dangerous game to be playing to overestimate your ability because let's say you're, you're someone that can beat a 5 and L game but can't beat a 50 and L game, you win 10k in a tournament, you suddenly jump up to 50 and L because you're super rolled for it. You're not gonna, not only are you gonna lose money, but you're not going to be able to learn quickly enough to be able to regain your bankroll while still on 50 and L. Because to beat 50 and L, you're gonna to need to beat 10 and L. You're gonna be able to beat 16, 25 and L, and then 50 and L. Because on each level that you learn, you're gonna to have to incrementally add another layer of Lego. And then once you get to 50 and L, you'll have all of that foundation. It's like if you're doing a maths degree, you know? You're not gonna be able to jump from A level to like third year of university. There is a huge gap in between, and nobody, nobody in existence, give or take maybe one or two people, would be able to just make that jump willy-nilly. And the same is with poker, even though it doesn't seem like it, even though, you know, I'm playing the same game as, as you guys, there is such a huge gap in between, in between, say, like 10, 16, 25. Once you get to 100K, 100K is you're playing like the, the biggest live tournaments or the biggest online cash games, not that I can beat those, but the people who are, there's such a huge gap. And there's a huge gap between someone like me and then someone like OTB Red Baron, if you know if we're both playing six max online cash it's it's something that you, you have to be humble about and something you have to be aware of and that helps you game select in the future especially if you're playing live poking you can look around anyway so yeah rant over guys much love and i hope this adds some nuance to the way that people think about their own poker game and their own poker career because not only do i want to give out good poker content but i i also think there's a huge 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 lack of poker career advice, whether that be, you know, which games you should be playing, your bankroll management, your mentality behind it, your lifestyle behind it, or even whether you should actually be trying to be a professional poker player. And this is something I was actually, sorry, last point, last point before I go. This is actually something I've been, I've been trying to deal with a lot recently is I, I'm getting a lot of new people into poker and I'm planning on getting a hell of a lot more new people into poker. And honestly, like 90, 8% of people who are going to try and be professional poker players won't make it as a professional poker player. I'm not I'm not sure on that number. It's complete complete intuitive guess. And I was like, damn it, am I am I just screwing over that many people though? The way around it that I found is on my training site when we're, we're going to say, okay, here are some points in your career where you can really check to see if you're up to scratch, if you're above the curve of learning. And if you're not, Okay, we're gonna we're gonna also offer you. Okay, do you want to be a martial arts instructor? Do you want to be a yoga teacher? Do you want to be into arts and crafts? Do you want to be a trader? Do you want to be in cryptocurrency? Here, you can try out all of these different spheres, and we're gonna be honest with you. Okay, most people won't make it in each one of these individual spheres, but if you find the one that fits with you and that you're motivated to play, which is huge, guys. If you're not motivated to play poker, don't even bother. If you sit down for a seven hour grind and you find yourself just flicking through Facebook, it's time to give up because every single sick poker player out there, they got bitten by that poker bug so hard that they were glued to their computer for years on end. And it's, you don't have to be glued for years on end, but you have to definitely be glued to it. So yeah, I, I think that the, the way around that for me, ethically was to make a site which is still in the working. It's gonna be a lot bigger than I thought it was. So it's gonna take a lot longer to produce where people will have a lot of alternative options to go into different branches. And then we're also gonna bring a lot of new people into poker as well and see how they do. That's it from me. Stay smart guys and stay humble. And uh, hopefully my editor can uh, do something with this ramble. Peace.